Here. Trustee Bonnie? Here. Trustee Shaws? Here. We do know one CD. Nothing under uh, public hearing. Uh, we do have a few uh, proclamations under appointments and presentations. We have a proclamation in honor of Motorcycle Awareness Month. Uh, May in 2024, that is on the agenda and out there for everyone to see. Can I get a motion to accept the proclamation? So moved. Second, second. I got first out of trustee Shonis, and the second out of trustee Heron. Roll call, please, Tracy. Aye. Trustee Shonis? Aye. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Michaels? Aye. Trustee Lindy? Aye. Trustee Lennon? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Up next, I have a proclamation in honor of Economic Development Week for May 6th the 10th of 2024 that is also on the village agenda and website. Can I get a motion to accept this proclamation? Yes, Thank you. Second. I have first out of Trustee Shomas, second out of Trustee Heron. Roll call please, Tracy. Trustee Shomas? Aye. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Michaels? Aye. Trustee Lenny? Aye. Trustee Heron? Aye. And then not on the agenda this evening is a proclamation in honor of National Police Week. <clears throat> and I'm going to read this one. It's May 12th through May 18th of 2024. The date is May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day. And the week in which May 15th falls is dedicated as National Police Week to honor the service and sacrifice of law enforcement officers fallen in the line of duty and those who continue to enforce our laws and keep our neighborhoods, schools, and families safe. And whereas the members of the law enforcement agencies serving the village of Sugar Grove play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the village of Sugar Grove. And whereas, it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement agencies, and that members of our law enforcement agencies recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas, since the first recorded death in 1786, there are currently 24,067 law enforcement officers in the United States who have made the ultimate sacrifice and been killed in the line of duty. And the names of these dedicated memorial of, of public servants are engraved on the wall of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C. And whereas, 282 new names of fallen heroes are being added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial this spring, including 118 officers killed in 2023 and 164 officers killed in previous years. And whereas the Village of Sugar Grove recognizes and is grateful for the incredible service and sacrifices the members of the Sugar Grove Police Department and their families make each day to protect the citizens of the Village of Sugar Grove, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board of the Sugar Grove proclaims the week of May 12th through the 18th of 2024 National Police Week. In recognition of the selfless dedication and bravery of our police officers, all residents are urged to recognize all law enforcement officers, past and present, who by their faithful and loyal service have established and maintained peace and security in our community. Supplemental MFT IDOC 
Resolution for the 2023 Road Program, Item B, a resolution authorizing agreement with Correct Electric. Item C, an ordinance approving the final PV plan for Starbucks. Item D, an ordinance amending Waterford Place PV and approving preliminary development plan for Lot 27. Item E, a resolution authorizing contract uh, with Tesca Associates, Inc. for planning and technical assistance. That's all we have for items uh, for action this evening. Do we have any public comments at this time? Sir, you have three minutes when you get to the podium. Can you just state your name for the record when you get there? My name is Charles W. Smith III. I live in the woods. I just read, when I read the minutes about last month, talking about no burning. I've lived in the I've lived in the woods for the last 44 years. I believe I should be grandfathered into there for not for non-burning the leads. I'm looking out there along the, the, the all of, when I go through the subdivision, I always I see it in different lots. Probably in the neighborhood, not per house, but probably about 25 or better bags of leads that are sitting out there ready to pick up. Smoke, if somebody that is somebody's got can't can't handle that, the smoke, they should never move out there in the woods. It's all you got all that the trees and the uh, pollen and stuff like that that's blowing around out there. They should never have gone out there in a period. Like I said, when I moved out there 44 years ago, that was it that was what I was able to do. And I did I'd say that I should not have to be able to take it. I will continue to burn just to let you know. And I'm not and I'm saying that uh, I should be going grandfather did you know to be able to do it. And there are my other neighbors. And it says there in the minutes that we were notified. I was never notified. The last time I would have any notification was when they told us about the water. When we had uh, manganese, manganese in our water out there. So it, talk, it cost me 800 some odd dollars to put a filtration system on my, in my house. So I'm just upset with all that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Going once, going twice, we'll close that portion. Under consent agenda, any request to remove an item? <coughs> Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda as previously stated? As stated. Thank you. Second. I have a first as Trustee Shulman, second as Trustee Heron. Roll call, please, Tracy. Trustee Shulman? Aye. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Michaels? Aye. Trustee Lundy? Aye. Trustee Bonnie? Aye. Thank you, motion passes. Up next, general business. Item A, the resolution approving a supplemental MFT IDOT resolution for the 23 road program. Brad. What's that mean? Oh, oh ma'am, I'm sorry. Um, so what this is is uh, every year, once we receive our final payment from, M from the state for MFT in April, we do a balancing so that we maximize the MFT dollars from the state. And so this is the amendment in the supplemental resolution to make sure we that um, in conjunction with our local roads. So this is just a, a balancing. It has no additional expenses. It's just making sure that our dollars received are expended uh, and authorized by the state of Illinois. So this is something we do annually um, with the help of the EI. And this is just a supplemental resolution on it. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Any questions for staff? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve item A the re resolution as previously stated? Any questions for Brad? Okay. 
Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve item B, the resolution as previously stated? Stated. Thank you. Second. Is that the first? Here's a uh, site plan uh, that shows the, the building laid out with the parking. There is a cross access connection uh, to the auto zone right now. If you go out there, you would see some barricades up that we would ultimately open and we're entitled to under the operating documents uh, to that access. Uh, currently, there's not an access to the ring road, but obviously that's something we would need. Uh, cross access is allowed for the shopping center operating documents. It's just Citing a driveway that works uh, in, in the context of our uh, two tenant development as well as uh, is subject to approval um, uh, by Jewel as declarant under the operating document. So, uh, two tenant building, again, Starbucks and uh, the available space for retail slash clinic. Uh, this is laid out, you can see the drive through. Uh, 
wrapping around the back of the building that has two, four, six, eight, 15, 16 cars, which uh, is generally within uh, the range of what you'll see in a modern day Starbucks that's getting developed today. They look for a minimum of 12 spaces. Obviously, more the better. Uh, COVID has <laughs> obviously accelerated the advent of, of the drive through window and the traffic, so the more cars, the better. There is a, a two tenant tra uh, trash uh, enclosure behind the building that's tucked between the drive through and the back of the building, which would be adequate to serve these two tenants. And then you have parking uh, uh, wrapping three sides of the building. Blow up of the trash enclosure, uh, two uh, bins, one wet, one dry with the trash enclosure, it would uh, be adequate to serve the needs of, of, of the two tenant building uh, with a nice gate element. <coughs> and Scott, what's that material on the front? The gate right to match the existing footprint, match the building. And the gates themselves would be wood? wood. Yeah, okay, so that's fairly difficult. Of what we Yes, sir. If that becomes medical, does that have does the design have to change here? Do they have to have different no, dumpsters, sir. just regular dumpsters? No, sir. When when we typically uh, we find the least amount of trash from the medical users. So from the, the uh, if this were uh, proposed as a two tenant restaurant building, we'd be a little concerned. But when it's retail or medical, it, it, it's typically adequate. And what's the height? Can you tell the height of the? Seven feet. Yeah, so the bins themselves will be covered. You wouldn't be able to see them from plain view. Any other questions? Would you mind going back to the site plan? Sure. Uh, is there a reason the walk or the bike trail is um, got the 90, 290 degrees in it instead of just coming straight off the front of the building? Here. By the sidewalk, by the 47 frontage. It's a great issue. It's, it's a slope issue that the, we need more length in the sidewalk to get into the, the connect to meet ADA requirements. Okay. All right. And I had to ask Danny about cross access to the shell station, <coughs> but due to the grade, it's not possible either. Right. And there's six foot grade differential. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sure. So, so you're looking at or medical in that other one, not restaurant. Correct. Okay. Starbucks side. Excuse me, but can you point that out? It's very, you know, it's hard to tell what sure. you're really talking about. In terms of who the tenants are? Yes. Sure. Where there be. So this is the auto zone that currently exists, okay. and the shell is down here. This would be the Starbucks layout, it's box, and this would be the remaining available space. But the whole building would be built at the same time. So it would be built in shell condition, and then the dependent spaces come online, they would be built out you know, for the Starbucks and for the And Heidi, did you have any questions about the site plan? Uh, no, I was just, it, there's no intention of having Sure. Well, it's interesting because we, we typically put in a 1,000 gallon or 1,500 gallon grease trap with these types of developments. Mm -hmm. we, we, we stamp them out all over the place. And the reality is that Starbucks doesn't generate right. any grease because all the baked goods come in and on pallets on a daily basis and they get put into the into the coolers and, and whatnot. But there, there are no fryers or it's just not like we're putting a, 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 a raising canes here that would have all kinds of grease. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. That's not that's why I didn't have a problem. I guess my, my only question is, are you, are you obviously based on the site plan, opposed to a some sort of restaurant locating there? We're, 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 we're not opposed to it as long as not only from your all's code standpoint, but from a demand standpoint, there's enough parking 
you know, to satisfy it. So it's hard to, you see a lot of, for example, tropical smoothie cafes today, which would actually be smaller than what, what is laid out here. So we have to divide that second box, if you will, into two more boxes. People are coming and going into the Tropical Smoothie Cafe all the time. And it's not a heavy parking log, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so if something like that came along, it'd be more palatable and would meet the actual user's needs, and it wouldn't be under park, and it would probably meet your code, but it's hard to, to really say until we know where that is. Okay. If you had a, you know, a, for example, and it would be hard to do in today's day and age. If it were Chipotle, I'd be a little concerned that would that it would be under park. And Chipotle would also want to pick up what they call the pickup lane, which is just the same thing, the drive through lane, but you actually order off of your, your phone app as opposed to at an old board. So it really depends on who the user is. Okay. Yeah. The last question. Uh, maybe maybe we're, not, we're, I can't We're here all night, <laughs> we're here all night. Um, just knowing how, when you pull up to other Starbucks <clears throat> and how prevalent it is to have the order ahead and their options to do either the drive-through or just the in-store pickup. Do you plan on having designated spots for that in close proximity to the building? I know you have handicap there, but then there's two other two other stalls that are, are not marked. Would they be marked? Yes. Okay. Starbucks would want this, the parking stalls closest to their uh, storefront entry to be marked for mobile order pickup. And we probably, try to shift those to the side of the building, they probably won't like that. But in our agreement with Starbucks, I believe they have four mobile order pickup dedicated stalls. It's not bad if it were on the side because you have sidewalk access, so it's not right. terribly far, but yeah. Okay, that's all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pre-COVID, we, we never saw that. That was never a requirement. Now every deal we do with Starbucks, it is a requirement. Yeah. Well, I will tell you as, users that that is the way to do it because you wouldn't want to order ahead and then have 14 cars in front of you right. and end up waiting now for 14 cars and might as well have ordered at the window so right. it is a thing as you know I'm sorry. it's a thing it's a thing okay so uh, you know here, here's a monument sign we saw that there are a couple of monument mcdonald's chase some of the other users have signs this is laid out starbucks would take the top panel be visible from both sides of the street, and the other user or users would either take the whole panel or we would split it into two. Uh, more technical drawings, the site lighting plan, uh, labeling to put candles, it's not very light in terms of, uh, it, would, it would be uh, spewing light across the street in the typical hours, they vary location to location, but Starbucks are typically open by some locations 5 a.m., others 6 a.m., and generally closed by 8 or 9 p.m., depending on user demand. And the light, I don't know if it's an issue anymore, but it's probably the, uh, the same light as in the Jewel Plan. Now we've talked about uh, with staff, correct me if I'm wrong, we talked about maybe swapping out some plans during the planning commission meeting. There was a concern about visibility and I can see that. You know, we just came from the site and saw you have some pretty mature trees out there, so we're open to those types of changes. What, what we're able to do on our lot is a lot easier than making changes off a lot, frankly, because we don't own that shop. So we, we don't have as much flexibility. This just shows that the truck, uh, the truck loop. If you look at the blue line, it shows the delivery truck coming in and how we maneuver through the line. And this truck turn exhibit shows that the trucks can maneuver the typical box trucks that would serve this uh, development and come in with the pallets of food and whatnot. They'd be able to maneuver safely this parking lot that's the point of, of this exhibit again the floor plan laying out here the starbucks and the available space down here uh, scott 
Scott, if you want to speak to the elevations, the materials proposed, as proposed. Sure. Uh, you guys need to come out there. What a, yeah, it'd be great if you did. Sorry. You want to see your smiling face. Uh, so again, I'm Scott Shoes, I'm with JTS Architects. Uh, Andy got into this a little bit, but two tenant building, uh, Starbucks portion of the building, which is kind of to the left of that uh, tower element that says tenant. Uh, that's uh, the Starbucks prototype elements mixed with, um, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but the REA stated that we had to kind of mix the jewel um, design elements in with the outlaw elements. So we've integrated the uh, same brick color, same EFIS color up top there, um, and then the stone. Uh, I believe the Jewel Center has a split face block. Uh, we're opting for more modern uh, stone look. Um, and then those brown elements that you see around the drive through window bump out and the entrance to Starbucks are these aluminum slats. They're like a wood look, which is a, a Starbucks element that they wanted to see on there as well. So aside from that, you've got canopies over the entrances, and uh, that's really it. So a lot of the aesthetic of the building is dictated by the PUD or Star or Jewel. Both. Both. And, and, and Starbucks. And Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Because I personally love the way Starbucks has a lot of wood with their build-outs. I think you don't need the sign when you see the building. You know, you need it identifies itself, and I think it's stunning. So uh, while this is beautiful and it looks like it, you know there's still high quality in here, I, I think maybe in the future if there's ever another Starbucks in our village that maybe we could do a, a wood one. <laughs> <laughs> there would probably be more of that scout with their dual wisdom. Yes, yes. And it would be far more prototypical of Starbucks if we got to use more of their design. So hands are tied for the rest of the time. Yes. Okay. Here's your overall schedule. We obviously like to be as possible. It's somewhat dependent on when we get the final uh, approvals from Jewel under the uh, shopping center operating documents, as well as uh, the approval here, uh, hopefully, and the permitting process. So kind of an all the, the, the current slate of delivery is basically a year out. If we could improve it, we've never we've done probably three or four dozen of these Starbucks projects uh, in the you know, past 10 years. Okay. We've never had a situation where they push us back. If we're able to get them open sooner, they want it sooner. They're always trying to be their Wall Street counties. So, anyway, this is the overall schedule, and we're here to answer any questions. Yeah, I appreciate your consideration, and we're sorry to hear. I know Michael Cass is fairly well, uh, very well. Actually, we worked with him over 20 years. Met him in Oswego you know, decades ago. Worked with him there in Downers Grove, and I think we're all lucky to have him. I just have more sorry to hear about his mother's passing. So, wish you guys a lot. We will, and I'm sure you already have. <laughs> Um, is this a home by a locally owned franchisee or is it a corporate store? It's a corporate. All, all the store, Starbucks are corporate stores. So they, they've approved uh, the layouts? Yes. Okay. Were, I, I ask just because I know some of them get real. They, I'm sure they would prefer, you know, right in, right out on 47 and that sort of stuff. I'm just thinking about a conventional user that's got to drive in. So the McDonald's and then drive all the way around and just wait in line to come around and get the coffee. You're driving and by Chief drive the auto zone and then you use there. their front lot to get through. You can go through the auto zone lot. Yeah, yeah. The point well, is I, I'm making four, five, six turns to just, you know, get my cup of coffee. And uh, I know some some of the franchises that I get to get to. As I've done my own individual research and doing that, they they want no more than two or three turns and that sort of stuff. I pick out a lot. So that was just kind of my immediate thought. As long as they were okay with it, yes. I don't have I don't have any concern. I would just eat, you know, be halfway to something and come back and go, oh, gee whiz, well, you know, we didn't put this back there. There's nothing you're looking at tonight that Starbucks has a prior to coming over here and there's
there's not a lease document that gets signed that doesn't go through Seattle. Okay. All right. Sure. Well, we're glad to have them, and hopefully we'll have some more. <laughs> what about traffic signage from the outer ring into the Starbucks? I can see those people are coming from, let's say, Jewel going west. They'll go straight into the Starbucks, and then you have somebody coming south on that outer ring. Will it be yield sign or some type of signage put up? That's in the safety plan. That's part of the access issues that were called out by Chief and Public Works that we we're addressing in the form of occupancy. Um, there's some bushes that we're going to have them cut down <coughs> in the median there. Yeah. And our chief advised that there be some stop signs added at some of the end of the rows yeah. of Jewel. And, and, and that was there in lies since we don't own that, we would probably require the owner and or Jules approval to do anything off the off the lot. So just just we're happy to, to push. Yeah. We have no problem pushing. But we just want to be clear that there's some of these items are out of our control. Sorry, Chief. Congratulations on the award. Here, you're talking about removing all those evergreens there on the east side, southeast corner. Personally, we, we'd love to do that, but yeah. if we actually did it without approval, someone would be knocking on our door. Yeah. Yeah. Would be my guess. I have a question. I'm, I'm sorry, no, no. It's, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just not the way the, the process works. Unfortunately, you can get up under public comment though and, and ask the board questions, but this is the time for the board to hear from, from the applicant. Um, when it comes to those trees though, would would you be opposed if the village worked with Jewel in those trees? Obviously, they're a visibility issue, is why the chief has identified them. If they're removed and needed to be replaced with a boxwood or a low line shrub, would you be opposed to putting that replacement in? We're not opposed to contributing to some limited scale. Yeah, no, okay. All right. if, you're looking, if you're looking to re-landscape the whole shopping center. No, that's not what I'm looking yeah. to do. I'm looking to make sure that it's not a vacant corner, sure, sure. and I'm sure that their question is gonna be, you're making us remove trees for a visibility hazard, but they probably have a tree requirement in the overall PD and shrub rating that they have to adhere to. So it's just more of a replacement of Understood. for visibility. Is, is there any way that, since that's an existing condition, whether we were here or not tonight, is there any way uh, from a, uh, I don't know the right word, way of saying this, so forgive me, a code enforcement point of view that someone knocks on the door and says, hey, we, got a, we have a safety concern here. Because if it comes from us, right. it, it can. It'll come from us. Yes. It might be received better coming from here yep. than us. Yep. But again, if, if you need us to contribute a couple of boxwoods, you know, that's not an issue. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. I like that you're also uh, proposing vacancy in the village and creating a vacancy for a business opportunity beyond Starbucks. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for putting this application together. And um, I know there are many people that are excited about Starbucks. And for those that say we already have a Starbucks, I will say, while they do provide a service to the village, they are not a full service Starbucks. And you cannot use your rewards and bonus coupons <laughs> at Starbucks in the Jewel. Right. Therefore, you can use them in an off-site location. Well, that, that brings up the, the, the point that this gentleman brought up. The, the Starbucks within Targets and Jewels, those are licensed Starbucks. That's a different whole division than the new store development Starbucks. So you could actually get two different, you could walk into both places and have two different types of experiences. But we find that the corporate on the street Starbucks, that's where you're going to have your best experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No additional questions? Okay.
Can I get uh, a motion to approve item C, the ordinance approving the final PUD plan for Starbucks? Absolutely. Second. I first have Trustee Shomas. Second, out of Trustee Heron. Roll call, please, Tracy. Trustee Shomas? Aye. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Michaels? Aye. Trustee Lenny? Aye. Trustee Bonnie? Aye. Motion passes. Welcome to the village. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're proud to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have an ordinance amending Waterford Place PD to approve a preliminary development plan for Lot 27. We have the petitioner come up. And Danny, if you want to lead us in this. So, we previously discussed um, the amendment to Waterford Place PD to change the proposed use for Lot 27 from a medical office to Scott Richmond. Uh, I'm the attorney for the petitioner, Phil Keene, who's here with me as well. I really don't have anything to add. I mean, you'll see the pictures of the existing buildings. Some of them had some brick above the garage, some of them didn't. Um, and uh, what we did here as a way to, to hopefully satisfy the board is, is there's brick on the front um, and then it wraps around the garage on the side. Um, the, the reason not to put brick above the garage is it just changed the structural element up there. It adds additional cost. So uh, hopefully this will, will satisfy the need for the additional brick and, and, uh, and make it a project that you'll be proud of. Thank you. I know that one of the items that was brought up, and if, if, you, if you don't mind addressing it, just that uh, Trustee Michaels and Trustee uh, White addressed brick on the, on the north elevation. Uh, down the side where the entrance doors are. And I see you have face brick on the front base, but not on the side. Right, yeah, it, it just became a cost issue. So it, it does wrap around where the garage area is, and you just didn't go all the way back. And from what I can see here, it's consistent with the neighboring property. Yeah. On the side elevation or street facing elevation, there's not necessarily that element there. I don't, I don't disagree that uh, we need the brick above the garage doors. Um, on the garage doors that face division, or uh, is it your, uh, capital, those all have brick above the garage doors. Uh, if you went interior, then it doesn't have the brick above the garage doors. And that was uh, done on purpose for the higher traffic, higher uh, visibility lots we were back in the day we required all that brick on the front and then it required it on the inside lots so uh, i was going to make our motion that we approve it subject to brick being added with all the garage doors are you okay. making that motion trustee michaels I will. okay do i have a second on that motion second second trustee michaels second second trustee heron roll call please no, and, and I appreciate all the other modifications. I just really think that um, we've built houses in the past that does not have the brick above the garage door. Uh, we went back and added it because it doesn't look good. I think okay. Yeah, and he's, he's okay with that. We're, we're, we're going to come. Okay. Is it uh, the brick? Is it uh, yeah. thin brick? Or it, it will be some sort of thin brick. All right. Additional comments or questions? Yeah, I, I disagree wholeheartedly. I, uh, this, I, 
I don't think we should be pushing additional costs on to a, a building that's not willing to come and build a beautiful uh, new building in our town. They have, uh, it's, a, it's a currently empty lot. It's been empty. Uh, they're providing housing for people who move into our city. And, and, and I think it's, uh, it's a shame that we're sitting here picking on brick over a garage door. We have a lot of other things to do. As you drive through our town, there's houses that don't match each other. There's brick in places that don't have brick in other places. And, and to sit here over a few feet of brick on each garage door is, in my mind, is, is just a little bit of a tall case. So I say I want to, I disagree wholeheartedly with uh, trying to force a brick upon us. I have no problem with not adding the brick on the garage door. Yeah. 
I, from my end, I don't want that decision to hold up the ability for someone to, to go home, bring in a couple of things. Right, I don't feel that strongly about it. Yeah, I have to hold it up. So, maybe yeah. the thing to do is we um, maybe have a motion for an addendum. Uh, we have right. a motion. We have a motion, and I have a second. Unless okay. our second okay. amends okay. his second. Okay. Then okay. we're going to do a vote. Then okay. We'll okay. Amend my first. You'll amend the first? I will not. You will not amend okay. your first. Okay. Are you amending right. your second, or do you want to sit with that? I think we call? need to vote yes. based okay. on that motion that's Perfect. been made. And Perfect. You'll leave it as is. Okay. I have a first and a second. Trustee Michaels and Trustee here on the second. The motion on the floor is to approve the. Um, PUD, which I amended, to approve uh, Before we make the motion, is that is that something that's going to hold up your project? Is that something that's going to be, make things a lot more difficult for you to have the brick in the front across the top of the garage? No, it's not going to make or break the project. I mean, he, he is built in, he's willing to do it. Obviously, you know, it, it was a cost matter because it involves, I guess, the lintel above the garage has to be strengthen and stuff like that. So it's a cost factor. That's why. Can I, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. So my original proposal was brick on each side, real brick on each side of the garage door, and then the other front facing, capital drive facing um, facade of each building. Real brick. Yep. Um, but now, if we got to do brick above the garage door, wrap it around a little bit, then it's going to be a cheaper, thinner brick, not real brick. So you would do a full four inch? Uh, if we didn't, if we said no brick above the garage, and just how you have it here, this was intended to be four inch. My my original proposal, just the, uh, just the just the capital drive facing facades, was going to be real brick. All right, okay. I'm, I misunderstand what you're saying because you're saying the full facing facade, which is also implying the window area that in this rendering is siding. No. Or are you talking about just here where the garage door is? The two sides of the garage door. And then underneath that half window, I. Okay, so as it's shown here, this is full brick, regular yes. brick, two columns, and then the base, like yes. the foundational brick. Right. Okay. I'd rather use better material. I would too, absolutely. Okay. So if, would my, if I need to amend that, no. you would use better material? Yes. I would amend my second. Okay, so are you just. You're... I would rather use better material than. than Whatever the 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 thin brick. Yeah. It's what we've got at home tomorrow. <laughs> so basically, you, know, you no longer have a second. On this, on, on his first. Yes. Because his first is a full brick coverage. Do I have a second on Trustee Michael's motion to have the brick extend above the garage? That's what I'm looking for a second okay. on. Do I have a second? That motion fails. Do I have a motion to approve the? Um, do I have a motion to approve item D, the ordinance for amending water place PUD, with the uh, site plan and rendering provided with with a four-inch real brick as columns on the side and at the front base, uh, the, the front elevation on Capitol Drive with real brick. I would make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? I second. I have a first out of trustee Heron on that motion, Tracy, and a, and a second out of trustee Bond. Roll call, please. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Bonnie? Aye. Trustee Michaels? No. Trustee Lindy? Aye. Trustee Jones? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, and it was good discussion, everyone. Um, up next, we have the resolution authorizing a contract with Tesco Associates for planning and technical assistance. Matt. Uh, yeah, so I'll be presenting this since Scott is not here. Um, so, as you have in the fourth packet, the community development department has been asked for community development director since April 23rd. Um, it is a budgeted position and will be filled in the future, but in the meantime, staff is uh, needing some assistance um, for technical assistance and professional, and so will they need to lay on ongoing items for the projects. Um, so
So the proposal in front of you is from Tesco Associates who have been realized by the village in the past. Um, they reached out, discussed with uh, other firms to see if there was any qualifications that we had with existing um, companies that we've used in the past. Um, this has been recommended by others as well to utilize Tesco for these services. Um, it is not a budgeted expense for the actual consultant side, but it is budgeted for the staff position, so um, that will be offset for a portion of that until that position is filled. Um, the Tesco is here to discuss if there's any questions for them. Um, and I will tell you that Scott was adamant about Tesco, that 
he interviewed them. I think they had used that in, I know at least one interview to do that. That is with HR Okay. And he wrote this order for us. It wasn't written. I mean, so Scott put the name forward as the administrator who he Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, but I, I think for accountability, I think it would be good to have documented evidence of the other, of the other potential vendors that he was meeting with in case someone is going to try to challenge us on something in the near future. I mean, we've got documented proof in the record, in the minutes, that these were the other two individuals that were discussed. Okay, so Does that make any sense? I, of course it makes sense. I, I don't want to hold up a contractor to really or doesn't want to approve the contract or would like to approve the contract with stipulations. I'm okay with that too. But I also know from a practical standpoint of what the village is dealing with yeah. and not having a staff member there. So if, from what I read in here, and if this is correct, Matt, you might be able to tell me that um, basically we can terminate this agreement within 30 days at any point in time. It's just a 30 day notice. So if we were to uh, agree with the stipulation and the staff gets back, get that information, all you're out is, I mean, you, and you decide, oh no, I really like HR Green better or something, we could terminate within 30 days or something, correct? I, I do, yeah, so I do want to mention it was, there were others that were interviewed and either could not complete what we needed them to complete okay. um, or did not have time to take us out for the needs that we had. Okay. Um, so that went into it as well, is that we may not have been able to get somebody just because they don't have the time to take us on for what we need, yes. because it's not a specific just one project. It's right. kind of technical assistance for other department. So I want to say that it did take a new account when okay. well, those interviews were being completed as well. All right. And that's going to be that now. Well, I think this is what we hire him to do. Yeah. I don't think that we need to micromanage every decision yeah. that he makes if he's got. Well, listen, we also have Marty who just came in from St. Louis, and he Boy, are his arms tied. And we are now officially on the Tesca uh, okay. contract, and it's just a matter of this has been put, so that'd be great if you could come up to. Sure. Um, I know Lauren still needs some stuff, but now it's nice having uh, Bernie in the room as well. Uh, this has been brought up, and <laughs> Trustee Michael has said, you know, this is a comment, he would have liked to go to RFQ on this particular item, and uh, Scott, as our administrator, felt the need to uh, consult with uh, well, contact consultants that we have done business with before because the need is imminent and it's yes, we're going to go through a hiring process for our community development director, but this is support staff uh, in the interim. It's not a body that's here so many hours a week, it's just a, a consultant who came by the hour for services that are rendered. So we have questions. Anybody have any questions for Bernie specifically? We've, we've done this in the past. We find consultants without going to our queue, correct? Uh, that, that's correct. Yeah. Um, More than one time or multiple? I mean, has this been a, I'm kind of new, so I'm not really sure over the last, I like, would say, 15 uh, years. I'm, so, I'm aware there. of a couple of times okay. that we've done it in the last, uh, in the last four or five years. Okay. So the, um, you know, say said last four or five years? I, I believe so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't have the, the records as to how many times that has been done. But it's not an unusual or, you know, unless it's for a specific project that you believe is going to go over the bidding requirement, uh, there's really no prohibition of hiring a consultant that has a special skill. Uh, as, as long as it doesn't need to be a licensed architect or a engineer or a land surveyor, and even if it were, if you had a satisfactory relationship with that uh, entity, it, a, direct, um, a direct engagement is, is perfectly fine. Thank you. Okay. And so it's, it's qualifications, and I just want um, uh, to let Tesco, Mr. Hoffman, if you would like to address the board at all. And so I'm sure there are questions for you in regards to the types of work and services. And yes, I know the third day item has been brought up as far as canceling the contract, but it's really support services and the things that we feel like you're going to be able to provide to us. So maybe you can enlighten the board as to your conversation with Scott as to the, the items that he has highlighted 
that he feels that will be sent to you uh, as support? Honestly, it wasn't super specific. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we talked about the fact that you, you were without a community development director that Walter left uh, and that you got a lot of things going on in projects. So uh, that's pretty much the extent of it. So I didn't get real specific in there okay. in terms of fees or anything. I just put an hourly rate in there. I would be happy if we have a specific project you want me to review or something to say, okay, I'm going to guess that this is going to be around $2,000 or whatever the amount is and put the caps on individual things if you'd like. I just it was so open in an initial conversation that I really couldn't put a cap on it. Okay, so that's a good question. So if we have, I know that there is a potential subdivision that has been sitting in community development and also brought it up at the meeting three weeks ago, at least. So it's sitting in community development, it's not going anywhere at the moment because we don't have staff to help support go through that. So one of the things that I know is a concern and question is looking at that application for variances within our code, mm -hmm. right? So that is something that would take her a lot of time if she's working on other projects. That's something we could send to Tesca and they would go through. Okay. Yes. That's so I, I see this for my life, 10 years in consulting, I, and based on your description of what this document is, is what's called a master services agreement, which is more or less the rules of engagement of how we would be engaging, keeping things open-ended on either uh, future engagements at these dictated rates that may or may not be time and material or fixed bid, right? And each of those engagements would then need to be brought before the board again for further approvals against this master services agreement. That's not what we're asking. If it's greater than a certain dollar amount, right, what is that dollar amount? Well, that's what I'm asking you. What are you comfortable with as a board? I know that we have it in here. Bernie, maybe you can speak to it. That $25,000 per our spending cap and our joint. Yeah, you just want to be careful that it's uh, uh, that you're not stacking, uh, that there is some deliberation with regard to the confinement of, of the engagement. Um, as I understand it, the idea is this is an interim uh, issue uh, that gets you uh, to a certain point, and when it does, in good faith, look like it's going to be a, uh, a more significant engagement, then you can go back and review it. But the twenty-five thousand dollars is, is is the threshold. I don't believe that that's been reduced by the board. So, so even at a continual run rate yeah. on a time and material. Once we hit that $25,000, then we need to take a pause and then do more formal bidding, if that's indeed it gets that. That's far. correct, and I think when you get close to that, I think you want to, uh, I think you want to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. It's a continuing conversation that you just don't want to be, you know, stacking, okay? So, you know, having, try, stacking is where you know you're gonna spend, uh, you're going to buy 10 trucks, okay, and they're going to be uh, $5,000 a piece. And so you're going to you're going to say, well, we got a contract for five, and then we got another contract for five, we got another contract for five, and it ends up being in excess of $25,000. You can't do that. That's not what's contemplated here. This is serving a need for a consultant, and also with regard to that, uh, it's it's really. Um, it's an engagement for someone who has professional skills uh, that are unique uh, and are also not necessarily subject to that, uh, uh, to that bidding. And I think that we've taken that into consideration to make sure that you're serving the, the, serving the public in the most conservative way possible. So with regard to the threshold, there's an exemption for individuals uh, that have special uh, have special skills, and so when you have a need for a consultant, that's specifically why the statute um, uh, allows you to do that to, to have a, re a trustworthy relationship with a professional. Okay. Where, where does it state the twenty five thousand dollars maximum? Is it well? We have in our, in our spending it's policy. Not our purchasing policy. It's just a bid requirement. Okay, that's but it's, it's not. Uh, now, this one. You can we can approve it subject to that and put a limit in there that makes the board comfortable. And the other thing that you did mention was that you would be able to so it helps us better serve and manage those dollars is to say we're sending you a project and you 
potentially can give us how many hours worth of time that would be that would help us navigate that budget before we come back to the board. Sure, we'd be happy to do that. And what we also typically do is uh, we can bill by individual subdivision or individual project if you want to. So that way, if it is reimbursable from the developer, you can do that. That would be great. That would be great. I, I haven't had a look at what Len has in or have Scott update the board where we're at monthly, like once a month. Um, just as we're going through, kind of it, just give an explanation of what we're working on and also where we're at. at our if you can do that list. until we get to the hiring mm -hmm. process, just at board meetings, if you can just plan to do that at board meetings, that would be great. But and so then I would ask that the board approve this item E resolution uh, as stated earlier. Sorry, with it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's okay, I'm just waiting for you a little bit. Uh, Mr. Hoffman, right? Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Um, I see you've done a lot of work here for us. It says the creation of districts adjacent to the airport, feasibility study for the development of the area for 56 and 47. Uh, numerous reviews of private development projects, including Settler Bridge, Village of Prosperity, and did you, um, were you a consultant to my Yes, yes. You were. Okay. Similar role. So you did it all. Yes, exactly. Uh, Mr. Michael, uh, what was the difference from back then in the day to now why we should be pushing him to a part of Q if in the past he had been hired as a consultant to do the same thing? Oh, 15 years. There's been 15 years since uh, we've used Desker, a number of years. I don't know. It's, it's been a long time. In fact, companies change. There's other professionals out there. HR Green doesn't seem to have much of a land planning service in Illinois, so you know, I didn't consider them even a viable candidate. So I, I just thought it's best for the village, especially with the plans coming before us, that we take the time to hire a good consultant. We might end up with Tesco, but I think the board needs to see some options. So is that typical? In, I'm, I'm a novice when it comes to this stuff. I'm trying to learn. So. Uh, is that typical at time then would create the issue where that uh, your services have dwindled over 15 years that we should be checking other things? Is that what you're saying? You're saying that uh, Tesco Corporation, uh, over the last 15 years, you've heard of or you have issues with them, uh, and that's why you want to go look at other RFQ? We haven't used them. And then uh, Planning Resources was a consultant that the village had used in a, for a while. Uh, they have gone more towards park and recreation, not land planning. So there could have been that transition. We don't know. I, I, can, I can tell you, just from a conversation, and maybe Matt, you know this too, is Scott, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because he's not here to say it, but in a conversation with him, he has used you with the county. That's correct. Okay, so he has a relationship with you, and the village has a relationship with you, so he knows of your recent capabilities, that help in this effort is one of the reasons why we can reach out to you. Uh, quick question, when would services be able to be rendered, say we say go ahead? As soon as you like it. Okay, I'm just wondering if we've got stuff backed up and waiting and we have- You have people on the bench that can start up on immediately what you're saying. Yes. That's okay. right. I will tell you that Danny has been a, a trooper through this process, but the items in which I have a long list of items that she's doing that she's not normally doing. And, and it should also be noted that the rest of our staff, including Brad and Matt and uh, Michael or anybody up in the public works building has offered their staff <coughs> and help to, their, to her department um, in any which way they can. So as far as you know, Danny hasn't done board reports and ordinances. And so Brad assisted her doing that to make sure the department kept moving. We're in construction season. Brad has a lot of stuff going on, but it, we're a team, and the village is functioning that way. But we need additional support. Is is really why this is in front of you today. And Scott, if he loves to be here and to tell me why he picked Tesca, but he's not and on vacation. And if he did not think it was important to have it on his agenda, he wouldn't have put it here. Sure. Uh, I think if these. Uh, has been great in the past. It looks like they've done some major projects for us. Uh, it's been a consultant role for us before. Past practice. Um, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I make the motion to uh, hire to uh, hire these guys. Can you can you make the motion? Yeah, sorry, motion to to it's okay. I can make the motion to 
motion to approve the resolution for the contract with Tesco with a $25,000 cap. I make the motion to authorize contract with Tesco Association uh, for planning and technical assistance with a $25,000 cap. Thank you. Well, I have a second to that? Oh, sorry. Thank you, Trustee Michaels. Uh, as a first, I'm trustee here and second, I'm trustee Michaels. Roll call, please. I'm mean, sorry, trustee Bonnie, Ms. Michaels. Thank you. Trustee Bonnie? Aye. Trustee Michaels? Aye. Trustee Lenny? Aye. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Shelley? Aye. Thank you, motion passes. Thank you. We will be in touch, I'm sure, tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, up next, we have, what am I doing? Um, I believe we don't have anything because I'm missing my page two. I feel like I'm very, nothing on discussion? Public comment. Public comment, thank you, sir. Um, up next, that's probably why it's white, you know? Um, public comment, anything and everything that you would like to discuss with us is up for public comment with a three minute time limit. There's no way that items up for discussion this evening. Are there any public comments at this time? <laughs> Come on up. Well, let's reset our timer. There you go. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that Trustee Bonnie, I hope you are as critical of Crown and the TIP as you are of Trustee Michaels. Um, I, I just think it's a lack of professionalism. You got the result back from the King County uh, State's Attorney and one uh, another member of the public, Dale Essling, honestly, he told you so. And then again, at the last meeting, you said you disagreed with his decision. And I know we're past the statute of limitations now, but during President Conan's election, you donated a few hundred dollars to her campaign, and yet she was the one that appointed you to that position. It's public information. I just think it's very unprofessional that you're attacking Trustee Michaels in that way. Um, and I mean, even with your guys' conversations tonight with the new residential dwelling, I just really hope you focus that much time and effort into the Crown development. I mean, I don't know how many hours you guys have spent debating leaves and what is a spa versus a hot tub. I mean, it's just, it honestly is ridiculous. Um, thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Going once, going twice, three times you will close that portion. I don't typically address public comments, but I think you should get the facts correct that Trustee Michael uh, and Bonnie did not contribute a few hundred dollars. So we'll pull my record, it's there. We did not. I think it was a penny to make sure it was working. Thank you. Up next, staff reports. I'm going to go around with one. Chief. Uh, just coming up on a uh, week from Friday is not on time. So uh, if you're looking for something to drink or donate for special Olympics, we'll be out there at 5 a.m. and I think we we'll go to almost noon. So uh, we're hoping to work on Friday. But that will be drier than last year. Oh. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you, Chief. That sounds like a good event. And it's always you're always trying to um, to do more for Special Olympics than they did the year before, and I think you have been able to achieve that each and every year. It's been growing. Um, I hope he's not too tired at 7 a.m., but when uh, uh, Sergeant uh, Alvarez gets off shift, he is, it should be, he should still be awake at that hour, and he's always a good, um, a good person on staff to be drawn up to hours. So he does a great job. Anybody have any questions for Chief? I, um, I have a question um, regarding the very unfortunate uh, accident that happened just recently on the Monty. Do you know how many fatal accidents we've had there? I know. I, I just, I know that there's two <coughs> Any other 
questions for Chief? I talked to Chief before the meeting about this. I've been hearing some comments about the intersect of the mm -hmm. new residential establishment at the corner of Harbor oh. and, uh, and 47, which is not within the village of Sugar Grove. Um, it appears that there's somebody who, it appears that they're living out of a storage container. Um, it does appear that way. There are like shade nets, there's there's a lot of planters. Pl there's planters, there's a solar panel on top of the storage container. Uh, tires blocking one of the entrances. But I think that Chief said we would maybe we need to communicate with Kane County Sheriff's Department just to find out what's going on. I know some residents that uh, live on Harder have been commenting that uh, they don't really like that there for I think for their home values and for it being so close to the school, not knowing what that is, um, is a concern for some residents. So I've also brought up with Chief today, and uh, he's doing his due diligence. Yeah. And Danny is going to do due diligence from community development to community development with the county. Okay. So she's working on that. So things getting addressed and.
public works put up the sign this week to add that. <laughs> yeah, all right. So public works put up the uh, another public street sign on Maple. It's very good turnout. Actually, it turns over to Tracy, but <coughs> it's a very nice event, very nice turnout, and family was very appreciative. Um, and it just goes to the good role of the community in honoring um, great residents that have served. So that was a nice one. Uh, um, I'm getting questions from people in Walnut Woods because the, the horses are up on the sidewalks and I don't remember. I know you put together a schedule when that was going to be in. Well, we have to wait until May 1st for any budget for a sidewalk. So okay. we're getting fresh proposals. So hopefully within the next month. We'll okay. Start there. Well, the I will let the May 1st know. <laughs> well, I'm going through and painting all of the spots. Like it's got white paint on every uneven spot and the really bad ones there are uh barricades, barricades right. over the right. like you see it coming like you yeah. See it, it, yeah, yeah. yeah well and that's what's initiated the questions like why, yeah. why is there a, a port you know uh, on the sidewalk in front of my house given the length of time it's going to take us to go and dress we decided to go out and paint this <laughs> great line yeah it's <laughs> very, very thorough and there's a substantial i'd say substantial it's never enough but it is the sidewalks it's going to over the years, and uh, is it 50 this year? Yeah, it's 50,000 dollars this year. Still not enough. No, it's yeah. about but it used to be 5,000. So <laughs> it's not a lot. Then one resident that had a child that got hurt, this, when she talked to you, Brad, um, she said it was a, she was upset her child got hurt, but like you, everything that you said, you said the right things, and she was happy with what you said was coming. So, great job with a tough situation, um, but great job with that. Thank you. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I just had a quick question on the Black Friday Creek pedestrian bridge. So, are we going to get that uh, completed under the uh, time frame before we lose our grant? We're mm -hmm. doing the best we can in spite of what I got right now. HR yeah, yeah, HR group is taking necessary steps. They already knew that the superintendent's going to be for construction on the project. Okay. We're already trying to get them to submit the bridge plans to the you know, contractors. So it's, things are going on behind the scenes. We're just waiting for that. Okay. That's the official thing. So, okay. We're doing everything we can. No, I know you're going to I'm just hoping. Just, just, <laughs> just so it's exciting. We're going to find the contractors at the MFS. There's three bids. I think it's an old time.
and I, I was more in solar, and I think that we need to do the things that we need, do what we can to to get off some of the fossil fuels. So the solar panels on the field uh, wasn't something that that concerned me as much. Um, but I think that's. By no means to try and be disrespectful. I think uh, asking questions and discussing things and trying to find the, uh, the the bottom line of why we're thinking the way we think, I think, is part of what makes democracy work. Why we're here. Uh, prime example is just that we, we talk about the RFQ and, uh, and you end up seconding my my motion on it, which uh, shows that we're adults and we're, we work together. Um, you know, we're, I, I base my opinions off of fact. Disagree with the state's attorney's interpretation of the law is just my statement. It's a fact. I disagree with it. It's a fact that there is an indictment. That's also a fact. That's that's it's out. I mean, it's not an opinion based at all. I said I disagree with it, and we moved on. I respect the decision of the state's attorney. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to mean that I agree with it. Once again, you know, I think disagreeing on things and, and saying so is what makes the world work well. We are adults about it, we can talk in open form about it. I will continue to be uh, to bring common sense to, to issues and I will also question things and, and make an educated decision at the end for, for the village residents here. And I encourage all board members to do the same. So if I came off being disrespectful, that's not what I was trying to be. Uh, I know a lot of times I sit here silently and I write a lot of notes. However, I just had a lot of questions today and I, I wanted to ask them. So I, I appreciate that. And if we need to discuss anything afterwards, you know, we always can. Uh, but I, I, I respect that you were here for a long time. You were uh, a mayor here for 20 plus years. You have a lot of institutional knowledge. And I don't want to, uh, I don't want to not be able to tap into that because other people feel that that might be coming at you or something like that. So I'm just clearing the air. I, I look forward to working with you on the board. And, I look forward with uh, continuing our, uh, our, our progress of the progress of the village here. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Shulman. I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, just a quick update. Sorry, I believe it's been from President's report, it's been three weeks since our last meeting. A um, couple things just a, a touchdown on our, our drive down. Um, and the things that I feel like we were able to accomplish. So one of the items that we were addressing with uh, legislators was the few uh, things, uh, the grocery tax we addressed when we were there, and we always address uh, the LBDF. And um, there were a couple other items like the Which that's brings me to that point exactly is the I have to tell you having trustee Bonnie down there and also in his profession and what he does when we're and this is for all of you if you ever want to come down to the drive down in the professions that you do and the items that we might be addressing it, it's imperative because when we were in certain meetings um, I before we got there I asked trustee Bonnie I said will you speak about this from your stance as a police officer and what it means to keep the authority within the municipality or the city, in this case in Aurora. Um, because the table was speaking about it. it doesn't affect us here because we're so small, but it does affect our municipalities and being able to govern uh, yourselves versus you know the state changing their policy. He provided insight that he was coming to my meeting to speak, but I had him speak impromptu uh, at the speaker's meeting when we were in question and answer and, and everybody, when I got around to my meeting, and they said, oh, of course, Trustee Bonnie is going to speak about free housing. I was like, don't you think I had that lined up already? Of course, he's going to speak about housing. So it was, uh, it was good. It's, I appreciate your support. It matters. 
uh, there's sometimes it's hard going down there and you feel like you're, you know, everybody's got their agendas and there's so many things that are happening. And all, all of them are always getting met with asks and we're no different, right? We're coming with our asks as we're trying to increase the local uh, government distributed fund every year. But the big takeaway was while well, they are proposing a zero increase in that fund and they are proposing a, an elimination of the grocery tax, is really hitting home the message of what they tout is progress. And that was what I hit home on was progress. And every single year you come down hoping for a little bit more progress. And I've been appreciative and expressed that from the Miller standpoint on the last couple years of increase in LDDF. And it really does matter to local government. Um, it's the progress word is what we really, I hung my hat on, which was, you're not making any progress on LDDF and we're going backwards on grocery tax, so we're losing money this year. And then just with the help of Matt, as I go to some of these uh, meetings and discussions on how it truly impacts the village financially, and then the other item we were talking about was pension, uh, pension reform and what that looks like, and then the portion of LGDF that we pay in 2010, I think is maybe our baseline where we started, was 24% of the money received from the village. And this year, even though they keep telling us they're giving us more money, we're allocating 46% of that money that's given to us through LGDF toward pensions. So it's hitting home that message is they think you're giving more money to local government, but you're also giving us more bills. So, you know, I think that that did resonate in our meetings. Um, so I just wanted to share what our experience was down in Springfield. I always think it's productive, and if any time anybody else wants to do that drive down with us, I would encourage you to do so. Um, I was at the groundbreaking for Mobasi, and that was a very nice event, uh, as they're putting in, gosh, I thought it was $30 million, but then I saw 60. 60. <laughs> so, uh, so a huge um, uh, number, a financial number in, in, uh, in the college. And then I had an opportunity to speak with your dad about um, just the idea of, and I've talked to Dr. Cannell about it before, about annexing to the village and water service. So we'll likely have a meeting. I spoke to Michelle about it uh, at the EI event. And so we'll likely get a meeting together with your dad. And he's been spearheading that effort for a lot of years to try to, to get them to hook on to the village water and ultimately annex. We're very proud of them and we want them to be part of the village. I know you are and everybody else is here too. So. Uh, hopefully that um, we make some progress with that. I have been asked and accepted to be on the Metro West board. So that happened a couple weeks ago. So I'm um, on it for one year until my term is up. That's usually what it is, when, you know, one year. And um, I, my, my role is really to be a representative for the COG with the county. So I might, you know, be attending some county meetings in the future, but also the good idea that I have to work in relationship with uh, Arbor Day was a, a big success. I think that having partners in the other local governments and Kiwanis, um, a lot of kids went home with seedlings and were excited to plant those trees. And we planted one tree last year, and this year uh, 500 seedlings went out between the library and the elementary school. And even if 10 take, right, we did better than we did by planting one. So um, hopefully that's that all works out. Uh, that's all I have. I look forward to our next meeting. Thank you all. I hope everybody has a very nice Memorial Day. Actually, I'll see you before that. We'll be back to start. So, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, second. Second. Thank you. Uh, first, I trust Trustee Heron. Second, I trust Trustee Shonis. Roll call. Trustee Heron? Aye. Trustee Shonis? Aye. Trustee Michael? Aye.